Bose-Einstein condensation is a phenomenon which occurs when you cool down a gas consisting of massive particles. The energies that can be assumed by a single particle in a box are epsilon k is h squared k squared over 2m and uh, we describe in fact massive free bosons. This is a simple description, you can also add an external potential to it, but we will uh, stick for now to this standard description of the Bose-Einstein condensation. The number of particles in the system is given by standard analysis that I also uh, followed in a previous movie on quantum gases. The number of particles is just the uh, sum over all the modes k with the occupation per mode and that's the Bose-Einstein uh, occupation. And we can transfer the sum into an integral and uh, because of the radial symmetry it can be written as an integral over k in this way and then we introduce a new parameter which is x, a new integration variable which uh, streamlines the term in the exponent in order to arrive at n over v times lambda to the third is 4 over square root pi and then an integral x squared dx over e to the power x squared minus beta mu minus 1. And the expression on the right hand side after performing the integral over x which runs from 0 to infinity only depends on beta mu and so we define this as the function g depending on beta mu. It is now very important to be aware of the fact that uh, this integral can only exist if the denominator does not hit, hit zero and that means that this, this exponential power should always be larger than one and for the exponent it means that it should be positive and it can only be positive provided that mu is always smaller than epsilon k and in fact mu should be strictly smaller than zero because the x in this integral runs from zero to infinity. Here is a plot of the function g uh, beta mu as a function of beta mu and you see that it's indeed only drawn for negative values, it doesn't exist for positive values. And it hits in fact a maximum value here which is around 2.61. So that's the maximum value that can be assumed by this function g of beta mu. And now this has dramatic consequences because we see that it's the density, n over v is the density, which is directly related to g beta mu. And this seems to impose that there is a maximum imposed to the density of the particles. So the maximum density appears to be the maximum value of g beta mu divided by lambda to the third. So this thermal wavelength defines a volume and I cannot put more than 2.61 particles in a box of lambda times lambda times lambda. Now this is strange because the particles do not interact so what would prevent me from putting more than 2.61 particles per lambda to the third into the system? I can keep on adding particles to the system and because they do not interact, uh, they should, uh, the system should just uh, accept them. So have we done something wrong in our analysis? Well, considering the spectrum of the system with the ground state, which is here, it seems most likely that if I keep adding on particles into the system, they will go into that ground state because that is the state which can accommodate the highest occupation. What has gone wrong, in fact, is the transition from a sum into an integral. So if in the sum we have one state which has an almost macroscopic occupation, which means that I can put extremely many particles into that state, and the next uh, levels don't have that property, then I should split off that state from the sum before transforming the sum into the integral. 
Now the g function is proportional to the density and we see it's an increasing function so if beta mu becomes less negative when it increases the g is also increasing and so we get more we can put more and more particles into the system. Now imagine that uh, close to the ground state that our mu is such that it reaches the ground state energy so this energy over here then we can make the occupation of that ground state arbitrarily large and if it's really very large we should split it off from the sum before we transform that sum into an integral. So the picture that emerges is one where we have an ordinary fraction which uh, satisfies the ordinary Bose-Einstein distribution and those particles can only uh, be filled up to 2.61 per lambda to the third and the remainder is going to be a very very large number and that is going entirely into the ground state and this is what is called the Bose-Einstein condensation. This picture which was made in 1995 by Cornell and Riemann is very famous in the context of Bose-Einstein condensation. In the experiment, which was a technological breakthrough, uh, they had to uh, reduce the temperature of uh, atoms, in this case rubidium atoms, tremendously, and then they increased the density of rubidium atoms. And then you see that uh, when looking at the momentum distribution, that what you see here, that you see an increased population of the low momenta. And we know that the ground state obviously is the center where the, the momentum is zero. And you see that uh, a more and more pronounced peak surrounded by a region where the momentum distribution is approximately zero within the noise emerges in the system. And that was the proof of uh, realizing Bose-Einstein condensation with atoms. <clears throat> Wolfgang Ketterle later succeeded in doing the same with uh, sodium atoms and uh, these three scientists got the Nobel Prize for their efforts. Now you may ask yourself whether such dramatic phenomenon like Bose-Einstein condensation leaves its mark into the, in the physical properties of a system. And that turns out to be the case indeed, and we can verify that by looking at the pressure. The pressure is given, so see the previous movie, uh, or as P over KT is one over V times the ln of Z grand. The V is cancelled by the uh, sum over K, which comes from this logarithm of a product over case. And then we arrive at this integral which only depends on beta mu. That's very similar to what we have seen previously with the density. This only depends on beta mu. And so I can write this as a function f depending on beta mu. So if we uh, compare that to the density, uh, we saw that the density was an increasing function of the mu, provided mu is smaller than zero. But when the mu hits the value zero, it will stay there. And if this mu will stay at zero, it means that the p is constant. So irrespective of the density, there is no change in p. And that's rather strange. Imagine you have a system and you keep adding particles to it and the pressure doesn't change. Now the reason is that the Bose particles uh, used in this uh, analysis, they are point particles, so they don't necessarily occupy any volume. And moreover, they are Bose particles, so they, they like to be together, and they are all not moving, so they don't uh, contribute to the pressure because they don't have a momentum. And so it makes sense, of course, although it's a bit counterintuitive, that once the density has reached a critical density beyond which the ground state is getting macroscopically occupied, the pressure remains constant. The value, by the way, where this happens is the critical value, which is 1 over 2.61 in units of, uh, for the uh, quantity 1 over n times lambda to the third. So that concludes the discussion of this interesting phenomenon, Bose-Einstein condensation.